Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan and back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the MSI Z97M Power Max. Now a lot of you may be kind of thinking, oh this is the first time you've looked at an MSI board and uh, it's true for the uh, Z97 stuff it is, MSI were pretty strict with us and they didn't want us to do any of the previews like the other manufacturers did. Uh, one of the other manufacturers was actively asking people to break the um, Intel NDA and uh, we kind of chose not to, we stuck with our previews, but the MSI were even stricter. They actually didn't want us to show you the boards till launch, which is a bit backwards, considering there's pictures of them all over the internet and stuff like that, but we respected their wishes. Now I've already got the board out of this, and in fact it's already in our test rig. But the OC series is obviously their black and uh, yellow series. They've got the gaming series, which is black and red, and then they've got their kind of what we would call like entry level stuff, which is the black and blue boards, which surprisingly look pretty damn good. Now if we go over here, we can see that the M on the back of the box, we've got enhanced components, enhanced power, it's got slow-mo, clear CMOS button on the back, overclock engine chip, voltage checkpoints, easy button 3 and a debug LED, which I will show you in a minute. The enhanced thermal, which does need some discussion, and then the uh, enhanced BIOS up here, it's got multi-BIOS, easily switch boot BIOSes, easily rescue a crash BIOS, go to BIOS, push the button to go straight to the BIOS, and then click button uh, 4. So what we are going to do is, uh, first of all, take a look at what comes inside the accessory pack, because there's quite a bit of it, to be honest with you. Now, as usual, you do get a lot of SATA cables. They are just ordinary black SATA cables. You've got uh, a USB 3 cable there, which is, um, sorry, I do apologise. It's a SATA cable to Molex, so you can split it off. You've got the back panel um, SATA here. There's loads more. Why did I say that was USB 3? To be fair, when you look at it quickly, it does look like an internal USB 3 cable. But there is Intel um, Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth. If you want to add this on to the back, it goes at the top panel and uh, this pokes out the back of the I.O. Now it's nice that they've got it like this and not just soldered into the board because I'm personally not a fan of wireless. I normally either run um, home plugs or just straight Ethernet, really. Uh, wireless, I think, for mobile phones and tablets. But anyway, so it's there if you want to use it. And you've also got a couple of nice-looking antennas there. So you've got those options, and you can obviously stick them on the back and have them up. So you've got, you've got options, which is never a bad thing. We like options. Um... You do get a lot of manuals. I mean, this is all just like manuals. It's just like the weekends reading. Uh, the Got some CD drivers and utilities and that type of stuff. There. It's all lovely. Got a door hanger. So it's all kind of nice, normal stuff. But anyway, what we need to do now is have a look at the board itself in our test rig. And then we can, uh, yeah, just move on. Okay then peeps, so this is our test rig. It's a Corsair 540. Yes, it doesn't look standard because it's not. I wanted to have something custom considering we all tend to modify our systems anyway, but obviously we've got the M Power Max AC in there. So look around the board. We're gonna uh, look at it kind of in situ because it does give you an idea on the way stuff's laid out and the way it's gonna look when you build it as well. So the uh, USB, right angle USB 3 is up here and it's just behind the graphics card but obviously that does give you a nice line to get it out of one of your grommets. There's the vertical one here if you want to do it the normal way. We've got the easy um, buttons up the top here. It would be nice with the easy buttons if you could have um, uh, a switch to up the multi because with the you've got some plus switches, plus and minus switches there you can um, change the base clock with that, but not the multiplier. Uh, handy for tuning. I do think it would be nice if even we had an extra button that you could flick to change between base clock and multiplier. Just, um, I've seen it on other boards and it's actually really, really handy if you're really trying to push those clocks. 
You do have up here your overclock genie button, which does um, like an auto overclock for you. But to be fair, on none of the boards does this ever really work very well. It always overvolts too much. Um, I've never found one where it's actually got anywhere close to the voltage needed for a specific overclock. It's always way over the top because it's predefined um, stuff that they just store to cover a wide range of CPUs. Um, we have done overclocking guides in the past, how to set your BIOS, uh, your CPU voltage manually, how to set your um, uh, memory voltage timers and stuff manually. So go and look those up um, because although these seem like a great idea, things have moved on so much now that you know I personally don't think we should be, you know, if you're able to build your own system and you're into overclocking, then really you should be doing stuff manually. Something that I do like though, if I turn the uh, switch off at the uh, back so we've disconnected the power, there is a discharge button here which you can hit and it basically drains the board um, of power so that then you can safely change your memory, safely change your CPU or graphics card or whatever. <clears throat> and it's a, just a nice, you know, switch that you can run there. That is something I personally quite like. Also something that I'm very fond of, down in the bottom corner here is a go to BIOS button. If you're in your operating system, you can press that and then just hit restart and go straight to the BIOS. If you press that now and then hit the power button, it will also boot straight into the BIOS for you. Brilliant. Now, if I was to turn the system on, get ready for brightness, because we've obviously set this up to be very bright to highlight uh, the, the, the board that's in there, because it's pretty much what the system was designed for. You can see the audio boost down here, and you can see that there's the power trail that goes up. Obviously the graphics card does, um, you know cover a bit of it we can also see the plus and minus buttons that i spoke about before these are your base clock reset power button these are your voltage checkpoints up here we have got a volt uh, an overclock switch here now one thing that i did want to say is if you watch this if we go to f1 What will happen is it's uh, just booting into the operating system. But if I zoom you in, you can see it's all very lit up. You can just see that it's uh, changing there. Would have been easier, really, if I just did this. But well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to just going to remove this quickly. Just so that you can see things easier, because those uh, lights are stupendously bright. Now, so things are still changing in there. And by still changing, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for you to see. But those, the, the, the numbers, it's on 30 for the minute, but it, it flickers and flashes pretty much continuously. Um, each time you touch anything or move the mouse, it uh, you can see there, and when it's running benchmarks, it's constantly, that number's changing. Now normally when it gets to like the desktop, it just goes to AA or zero or something, but those um, uh, numbers will change continuously. You do learn to tune out, but it's, it does get a little bit um, annoying for want of a better term it's the first time I've ever found a motherboard where it's always dancing around all over the place so if we do this just quickly right so we've put the lights back on now something else I did want to show you if I put this down it's probably easier if we do it this way all right, it's not going to let us, so we'll do the top one. That's a water cooling barb, and it is all copper before people start kind of going on about it. It's just nickel plated. But if I pull this off, there we go. So we can see the water cooling barb there. Now that is 3.8. Uh, it did focus eventually. That is a 3.8 barb. 
and there's no way of changing it or swapping it out or anything like that. It's just a fixed piece that runs right the way through and then comes out on the lower one just down here. Come on camera, I really do need to stop using my mum's tripod. Comes out just down here. Now I think this is a bit of a rookie error because having fixed barbs is bad enough. But to make them 3.8 I think is a little bit daft because let's face it, the majority of us, and I am saying this as majority, so not everyone, but the majority of us will be using half inch barbs. Whether we end up using half inch um, hose or 7.16 is you know, a matter to be discussed. Um, but I think that we should have just had G1 quarter threads there because not only can we only just fit hose to that, we can't fit any fit angled fittings to make things tidy. It's just a straight vertical hose mount. Um, so I think this should have been just a G1 quarter inch thread so that then we could have put a 90 degree fit in or a 45 degree fit in. Or let's face it, we could have also screwed in a fitting so that we could have used um, some uh, rigid hose in there and maybe made our own bends and stuff. So this, to me, is a big oversight. It's almost like they've kind of added it on right at the last minute. Um, but this is such, in my opinion, this is such a bad idea. I think it would have actually have been a better choice just to have left it off completely. And this, I will admit, this is actually something that I am going to be significantly marking it down on because it's so restrictive in the end that it shouldn't be there at all. A half inch barb would have been bad enough. Um, in an ideal world, they would have just put a, a G1 quarter thread on it and left it. Um, or let's face it, just not have it on there at all. Uh, but having that tiny barb on there and then no choices of fittings, no choices of colours, no choices of angles, it's just it's, it's bad thought and implementation. Whoever thought about this obviously doesn't particularly understand water cooling and what the market actually needs. So this for me is a, is, is, a, is a very bad point to be fair and it's just something that if I owned this board I would actually be looking at taking those heat sinks off and if I wanted to keep it as air I'd even be thinking about cutting these barbs off and trying to cover it up so that it's not there because it's not particularly pretty even if you're not water cooling. So a uh, bit of a poor show on uh, MSI's part that way. Um, one thing I will say though is there's ample uh, mounts for um, CPU fans, CPU fans, air cooling fans and stuff like that all the way around the board. They're all the way around the CPU socket up the top here. If we zoom out, there's a lot down the bottom here as well. They are scattered around the board as well. So there's plenty of places for you to do that. I'm still very much a, I like to just set my fans up and forget about them. Uh, but there are options in the BIOS for you to manually set your fan profiles and the like as well, should you want to do that. One thing that I will say though, is from this view, we can see it quite well. We've got a M2 fit in here. I was meant to have been getting an M2 drive, but the uh, couriers have decided to, uh, courier gods I should say, have decided to play against us. And it's uh, now delayed and won't be here till after the NDA. But you've got the M2, but there's no SATA express on this at all. You've just got normal SATA, three, six gigabit a second down the side and you know, the normal chipset stuff. But that is pretty much it. It's not a, uh, an ugly looking rig. I know a lot of people are going to say that the, uh, the G-Force green and the yellow don't particularly go together, but it's just because we are, um, this is our test system. It's not, you know, a custom build or anything like that. I've not built this specifically for this motherboard. This is just the kind of carcass that we chuck all of our, our motherboards in. But anyway, now it's time for us to uh, move on. Okay then peeps, so quick look at the BIOS. And this is just to kind of show you, it's pretty much what we were used to with the, uh, the old gaming boards and stuff. It's the Z87 BIOS. So if you were used to it before, you'll be familiar with it now. But the reason why I did want to show you this rather than just saying that was I just wanted to point out if I whiz down, don't forget, don't copy my settings because all CPUs are different. And I, I can confirm my 4770 is a golden chip as well. So, you know, the likelihood of you've been able to copy these and it actually work are just like slim to none or very, very rare anyway. So, 1.26 volt V core voltage. I'm just going to F10 and clear that out. And I'm going to let it um, uh, boot into the BIOS. 
boot into the BIOS, what a dingo. I'm gonna let it boot into Windows. I just wanted to show you this live so that you can see what's going on. So there we go. I've not got fast boot on or anything like that. This is just left to boot as it sees fit. Right, so what we will do is we will open up. Now, 1.26 in the BIOS. We've got 1.264 in Windows. And you think to yourself, well, that's not too bad, Tom. And, you know, yeah, you'd be fair. You'd be right. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open OCCT. And then we're going to do like this. So I'm going to zoom you in so you can get a better look. And I'm going to flick OCCT on. Now, you need to watch this 1.264. It's already gone up to 1.272. We've not even really got any load on it yet. So that's the memory going up. And then we've just launched up to 100% CPU. Right, so now we're up to 1.28 volts. Now, I can hear you all shouting at the screen. <gasps> That's your load line calibration. Well, believe it or not, the load line calibration is either auto and you've got plus 25%, 50%, 75% and 100%. So there's no actual way of turning it off. And no matter what you do, this is the lowest that the voltage will go. So you think to yourself, oh, that's all right, Tom. What I'll do is I'll set my V core slightly lower so that then when it goes under load, the load line calibration will set it to what it needs. And that would be a great thing if it was stable. Because if I get it, because I know my CPU will stay stable at this at 1.26 volts. But if I have this so it's at 1.26 volts when it's under load, in a minute when it starts to dance all over the place, because it's not just on 100% all the time, it actually fluctuates a bit like your system would do. It actually then crashes because the system's unstable because the volts don't kind of match you know, at the instant that the CPU wants the power. So uh, in this present configuration, you actually need to have your voltage slightly higher to compensate for that ripple, for want of a better term, where it dances all over the place. Now this is more than likely just a, an initial BIOS issue that um, MSI will uh, rectify. We certainly hope they will, um, because this is just, I mean, having it so it goes up this high is just daft. Even the Z87i, their ITX board um, of old, it didn't have V-Droop. It just stayed at 1.26 volts, didn't, you know, matter what load it was. And you didn't have to touch the load line calibration. So they need to get that fixed because uh, load line calibration and CPU volts is something I pay a lot of attention to. And for an overclocking board, I certainly wouldn't ex be expecting it to be putting that much extra volts on and without any way of being able to stop it from doing it. Uh, but anyway, if we, uh, we stay with this, you can see 1.264 volts. It is 4.9. Um, it should be 100 uh, megahertz down here, but you know, CPUs, Ed, and BIOSes and stuff, sometimes they do read just this, you know, a smidgen be below. It's nothing to worry about. Um, if we were to go into uh, memory, and I can zoom you in a bit more to try and help you out. You can see we've got it running at uh, 1200 megahertz. I have managed to boot this and have it stable at 2800 megahertz with my uh, 2933 kit. And with a single stick in there, I can get it to boot at 2933 as well. We're not sure whether my CPU's um, uh, memory controller isn't strong enough for dual channel 2933 whether I do need to just spend a little bit more time trying to work out the volts and stuff, but the board won't boot uh, dual sticks at 2933, but it will with a single one in there fine. Um, so I think really that's about it for the overclocking and stuff. Uh, so yeah. Okay then peeps, so we are trying to keep things uh, very minimal. We are going to go into a lot more depth when we get the Devil's Canyon CPUs, which hopefully won't be too far ahead now. It is a little bit confused doing these uh, staggered launches, but obviously it will give us a good excuse to be able to test an old CPU against the new CPU on the same boards. But anyway, so the uh, award that we're going to give the MSI is actually the silver award. now. 
couple of thoughts behind this because one thing they can't change and one thing that we hope they really will change but if you want to go and have a look at all of the um, uh, comparisons don't forget to click the review link that side click the review link go and have a look and you can see um, you know where we're basing our thoughts from really obviously we've got new test equipment anyway so we've changed a few bits and bobs but the thing that we hope they do change is the BIOS because that thing where it's your load line calibration, that's a fair amount for that load line calibration to be getting um, bumped up. With the Z87 stuff, it pretty much went down to about 1.258 and just stayed there and you didn't necessarily need to touch anything. It was something that you just didn't look for. This went so high that I was actually looking for a way to turn it off. It seems to be con constantly set at plus 25% and there doesn't seem to be any way of doing, you know, disabling it. It's either that or auto and they both do the same thing. If you move it up to 50% then it actually goes up even further. So it's something that we, it's something that we're not particularly comfortable with. Uh, the easy option is, oh, okay, we just then drop our, our, um, our voltage so that then when the load line calibration kicks in, it's running at 1.26 volts. But then because of the voltage is moving all over the place and it not responding fast enough to benchmarks and loads on the system, it actually then becomes unstable. So no matter what happens, to be able to get uh, the system stable, it will end up running more volts than it necessarily needs. So that is something. It's probably just a very early BIOS issue. We are dealing with um, you know, really early samples before they're into retail and stuff. And I would be very, very surprised if after a BIOS revision or two, this uh, hasn't been fixed. It's probably something you're going to hear me saying a lot over the coming, you know, the coming reviews of these Z97 boards, because you know this does happen a lot at the beginning. I'm not surprised, um, really disappointed that they hadn't picked up something like this, possibly, but again, it will be something that fingers crossed will get fixed in later revisions. So my biggest problem with with the markdown on this. Um, and considering the price, 180 quid, that's not bad for the, um, one of the yellow boards because generally the overclocking boards have got a much higher price than some of the gaming stuff. But those barbs, it's just not right. It feels like a huge um, last minute rush job. And not only is it a rush job, they've kind of, well really they've used the wrong ones. I would have been marking it down if there was just half inch barbs sticking out the top. I will say that. The fact that they're 3.8 just makes it worse. They should have G1 quarter threads in the top so that you can fit your own coloured, your own barbs. Then you can run coloured ones, so you can have white, black, you know, all the different colours. Put your, for those of you out there that are running compressions, you can screw your compressions in. Those of you out there that want to run rigid hose, you can put the fittings with the, you know, like the, the fittings that you need for your rigid hose in there as well. With this, it just stops all that and it's completely backwards to the way that the water cooling mark has been progressing forward. Like I said, it would be bad enough if they were half inch barbs. The fact that they're smaller is just like, why? It's just, it, it would, when you end up saying something that they've added water cooling onto it, but it would actually be a better product if it didn't have it, it you know that you've made a bad choice with that. And I think personally with this that is the, the the bit about this board that I dislike the most to the point where if I was going to be doing a, a custom system with this or using it for something for myself or MSI wanted it for a show or something like that I wouldn't even use those barbs I'd actually be looking at ways to remove them uh, and cover up the holes that's how much that it just doesn't work and that's one of the reasons why we've decided you know, the, the performance is relatively there, but with that um, V-droop option, plus those barbs, we actually felt that it was worthy enough to drop it down, you know, into that silver territory. Um, it's still a good looking board. It still performs really well. Memory performance and CPU performance was strong throughout, but you know, the overall kind of package, it just, it just wasn't shiny enough. But you know, fingers crossed, other than the barbs, you know they'll get that BIOS sorted and we can start looking at you know but you know the possibilities of overclocking more and stuff like that because to be fair there's no way I'm going to be starting to put extra volts through this to try and get it bench stable when that load line calibration is wanging things up left right and center all the time so it's a great little board there's going to be loads of people out there that are going to uh, love playing with this 
um, for your Bumblebee and stuff. There was a plan, because I, I was meant to have got an M2 from MSI for it, and also the 290X Lightning was gonna come back so that we could do uh, like a photo shoot with it all in there and all that kind of stuff. But the couriers have actually delayed it, so it didn't make it back this way um, in time. But, you know, we can't do anything about that for now. We will be testing the board again when the uh, Devil's Canyon stuff arrives. But for now, it's getting the OC3D Silver Award. And uh, I'm going to rack off now because, uh, for want of a better term, I've got to get some more testing on other stuff done. So this is Tiny Tom Logan with the uh, Silver Award winning. And I do need to get the box just quickly. There we go, the MSI Z97M Power Max AC. I always forget the AC bit, but yeah, out. <laughs>